very, very good morning um, to all our students at the Hong Kong Baptist University. My name is Kenneth. I'm from Walk, and it's great to be invited here to speak to all you guys and share a little bit more about the Walk database and um, what exactly does this mean for marketing effectiveness and how it may help you with some of the marketing business or even um, cross um, degree inter interdisciplinary programs which might be available at HKBU. So, um, so throughout the entire session, if you've got questions feel free to use the chat function um, so at least you can uh, drop them across and happy to help everybody on this. Okay, so um, to start things off, um, to share what exactly is WALK. Um, so WALK is a global authority on marketing effectiveness. So what does that mean? Um, well, we understand what marketing is. Uh, we know what um, trends are. But more importantly, it's how do we try to derive insights from this entire space called marketing? So um, specifically, actually, the entire database, um, where we come from is we provide you with that insights through evidence and data. Um, this also therefore means that for students who are pursuing things like branding, marketing, strategy, um, or anything on the business administrative um, end of things, you might find WALK as one of the more powerful databases which you can um, access using HKBU. Now, um, if I'm not wrong, um, the access of WALK um, is through the um, library's uh, databases. So, of course, if you've got questions, feel free to reach out to them. Um, but otherwise, it can be accessed um, through the WALK.com as long as you're reading campus. Okay? So without further ado, um, allow me to start with walk. Okay, so um, if everybody can, um, presumably, I can. I hope everybody can see my screen. I um, want yes, awesomeness. Okay, so walk.com um, with the whole idea of marketing effectiveness, um, we talk about the idea of how to use the different modules available at walk. Now, when you are on the main landing page, um, we already begin to create a number of recommendations um, based on latest trends, latest articles that might be published within the walk space during that point of time. So this actually is refreshed on a day-to-day -day basis, actually. Um, and of course, um, you would see a number of features that do come on a fortnight to even a monthly basis when we really talk about key trends happening throughout the world. Now, let's talk about things that will um, be useful on a day-to-day -day basis for most of you guys. Now, for those of you students, who are pursuing marketing or business administrative modules or interdisciplinary modules, I definitely would suggest everybody to look at the feed. So the feed um, is accessed um, on the top right-hand corner, this um, hamburger little icon, um, and it also fe and it actually features the key news articles that's being featured all over the world. So you can see things that's coming from the Wall Street Journal. You can see things from Walk directly. You might be able to also see some research reports coming from Nielsen, Forrester, so on and so forth. Now all these were uh, are actually uh, publicly available. We aggregate them over to this platform to kind of show you the key thing that's happening throughout. Now, with each of these articles, I'm um, clicking on it. You will be able to see um, that it would be a what we will do. Sorry, if I go to go back, you will be able to see a quick summary of what this article is going to be about. We give you a key insight of the article as well. So for all our busy people over here, this is actually the fastest way to get a summary of the key trend or key um, space that might be developing right here and now. Now, at the same time, we will also give you the source of the article. And of course, if let's say the article is linked within Walk, we will also give you a um, tab to just to let you click through to one of the Walk articles itself. Okay, so the feed is your daily digest, your first 10 to, um, your 10 to 15 minutes every single day for all that marketing insight that's happening throughout the world. All right, um, moving on to part two, um, which of course is going to be quite useful for some of you guys who might be doing some research or um, for some of you guys who might be doing thesis or even down to your own papers. Um, I definitely suggest that you check out the case study library. Now, in case studies, um, in marketing, we always talk about um, the best of campaigns. What is a best campaign? So with Walk, um, we define what is a good marketing campaign um, by aggregating the award-winning campaigns from all around the world. We're talking about um, the most common award, which you may know is the Cannes Lion. Um, some of you know um, the MMA Smart, uh, Smart Piece Award, Marquis Award. Um, some of you guys may know of the Tangram Effectiveness Awards. Now, all these awards are meaning that these campaigns have done something that impacted the world. Um, could be from a media strategy, creative strategy, or an effectiveness strategy. So how does WALK actually put everything together? We categorize everything to 19 major categories, um, and then obviously subcategories after. So to search for any case study that might be supporting your own research, um, you might want to just click on um, any of these checkboxes 
and then click find cases. Okay, so pretty, pretty easy over here. So um, as you can see at this moment, um, this number that you see on your right side actually constantly increases um, as we add on more cases from all around the world. So pretty, pretty useful, especially for some of you guys who might be just looking for some campaign ideas. Now, similarly, if you are just looking for some inspiration, um, the case study finder is a great example as well. So um, with each of these case studies, we do give you the full write-up um, of, um, of the campaign itself from things like insights to results um, and data points, et cetera. So feel free to always use the case finder for your own good use. Now on case study finder, on um, case studies, you will also find um, other um, interesting points, which is known as campaign data, um, case study analysis and partner case studies. Now under campaigns um, data is actually uh, the idea of how we aggregate all these cases and use a media trend to give you an idea of how people have been using media. So say for example, I want to get an idea of how um, the uh, F&B industry might be using um, the different um, marketing channels as a lead source. So this is just a very, very quick um, overview of how things are. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, oh, how do we get all this data? Actually, this is all coming from our case studies. So you can imagine that um, we try to make everything as bite-sized as possible so that everybody can understand um, whatever you are reading as visually um, and as easy as we can. All right. Okay. So within case studies, um, case study analysis is going to be quite an interesting one. Um, if you've got um, some of you guys may be um, TAs, might, some of you guys may be lecturers, some of you guys might, be have, uh, might have to give a presentation and you're not too sure exactly how to analyze certain kinds of trends. So we definitely suggest that you take a look at case study analysis. Now this is going to be a very useful tool, especially for some of you guys who are hoping to understand um, key trends within the creative space or even down to why certain cases are like this um, within particular regions. So um, the case study analysis is a great spot to be in um, where you can also read a number of reports that's been brought to you by the work content team and even our partners too. Okay, and last but not least, on the case studies, we've got partner case studies that actually gives you our methodology um, of where you can find all these award case studies and where we actually bring these um, case studies from. So case studies, again, a very good source of inspiration, um, great space to be in, especially you're doing your own research. And of course, if you're hoping to understand certain insights from how industries or should I say how brands have been really using um, insights from industries to do their own marketing campaigns, check out case studies. Okay, I'm going to jump um, from case studies and move on to what data and show you an example of how what data is. So um, with what data, the aim of it is to, um, we've got um, evidence coming from case studies. So now it's how do we use data points to prove that. Now walks um, capability is to really help with key trends like media consumption, ad spend investment, as well as media costs. So um, what we do is we aggregate um, over quite a number of 50,000 over data points and place them into data sets or even down to the raw data points which you can use. So I'm just giving you an idea of how a, um, a data set is like uh, and how it's useful for you. So in the case of, say, for example, um, the, what you see over here, which is a very interesting piece that we've just shared, um, it's about Netflix. So you'll be able to see things like a graph and see trends and how it's moving towards, um, towards from a global perspective across different quarters. You'll be also able to see um, a, some a kind of like a commentary of how we feel of certain of this trend itself. At the same time, you will also see hyperlinks um, that guides you to various aspects of the work articles. So this also means that you know every single time you see a data point, it's not just going to be a data number that is plonked out. It's going to be also a pros that gives you an idea and analysis of how you should be approaching these data points. Very useful, especially for some of our friends in the marketing and brand space um, who are also hoping to understand our marketing trends and hoping to use data points to help them out. So this is going to be quite an interesting space for you. Now, um, under what data, um, where you'll be able to click at this moment is data points, survey and reports, and the, um, these two itself, yeah? So um, you'll be able to find um, reports, um, say, for example, um, global marketing indexes, um, trends that's progressing throughout the space itself, all within um, the surveys and report space. So we definitely encourage everybody to take a look at this one. Okay, so um, case studies on the day-to-day -day for research data to support that research. So what happens next? Um, what if I'm wanting to work on a research paper, a thesis, or hoping to just write something maybe for my communication studies about a marketing trend, a, a trend itself? 
So how do we do that? We start off first with analysis. So analysis is our work um, really looks at um, from a broader perspective, from both global and regional perspectives on certain developments of marketing trends. So say, for example, as everybody may know um, of the creator economy, when you see TikTok, Face, um, um, Meta, sorry, no longer Facebook, or even down to spaces like Snapchat, um, or even down to places like um, uh, for instance. Now, all this idea of the creative economy, how do we navigate, how do we navigate it? How do brands manage it? And better yet, how do we try to amplify our messaging with this comes our work guides. Of course, this is just an example of how our work guides are. Um, this is actually going to be that key masterpiece that you're going to see on a month-to-month -month basis, where we start to feature also some of the key things happening within this space. Now, about, above all that you've been reading, there's quite a number of articles which you can be reading as well that supplements um, the research itself. Of course, to find out more about these work guides, and click on work guides, um, and you can see um, quite a number of spaces from things like structuring for effectiveness, communicating values, so on and so forth. So definitely suggest everyone to take a look at work guides um, to have a very bird's eye view on how things are looking like in terms of marketing trends. Now, after the marketing trends, it's also important for us to understand what works best. So that's why we have the best practice module over here under analysis. So over here, we feature some of the key things happening within the space from category to um, marketing um, practices, like say, for example, sustainability, uh, marketing search, for instance, so on and so forth. Now, you'll be able to also see things like the Spotlight series um, that covers quite a number of um, country-specific insights. And at the same time, you'll also see work evidence, which is going to be a very, very useful piece for some of you guys who are looking into answering some of the key difficult questions in branding, um, like how do you balance brand performance? How do we do measurement, for instance? So it's going to be quite an interesting space for everybody, um, especially when you're looking at what's happening now and how do we do better uh, with the best practice space. Now, um, with analysis, for some of you guys who may be um, a little bit more of an um, auditory learner, so not too much visual and reading, um, I definitely suggest that you go check out Walk Talks. So Walk Talks actually features a series of podcasts and webinars, which is um, also covering um, the key uh, walk guides or best practices papers, which we have been publishing, but at the same time also offering opinions from some of the leading brand managers and marketers from all around the world. Now, some of these people are also interdisciplinary themselves as well. Say, for example, for some of you guys who might be pursuing um, sociology or even down to psychology, psychology of buying, for instance, or down to things like diversity, inclusion, um, how do we try to put all this thing together with branding? Um, this actually is going to be a quite an interesting source for you as well. So lots of different perspectives that you'll be getting from some of these um, CMOs um, or even lead brand strategists from all around the world to help you um, craft your own perspective and your own insight to how certain things are progressing. So definitely podcasts and webinars are a great way to listen um, and to also get on the go. For some of you guys who are on Spotify or on iTunes, you will be able to find us um, there as well. Um, personally, I've been usually using Spotify, uh, the Spotify playlist from Walk uh, for something called um, 3 in 15, which basically is um, just snapshots, um, just quick snapshots of a space um, that's being talked by three speakers across 15 minutes. So definitely a great way to um, get on the go uh, and learn on that go as well. Okay, with all of that done under analysis, um, let's talk about the rest of the things that would be quite useful for you on a, um, on a larger space. So for some of you guys who might be interested in branding but aren't sure um, what's going to be like, okay, so this is going to be a treat for you guys is because we also have published our strategy toolkit. So this is a seven module um, that does um, help our students as well as some of our um, students who are interested in the full branding and marketing space to better understand a little bit more about what is this space looking like? So with the strategy toolkit, you get a seven module um, space itself. Um, you will also, you'll also be getting some notes um, and even a quiz uh, just to assess how well you understand this. And this goes back to real fundamentals um, from, of marketing, from things like how marketing works, building a persona, generating insights, how do you understand consumer behavior, um, simple measurements, so on and so forth. So Pretty useful for some of you guys who are exploring our marketing and branding modules within the university. Um, but more importantly, for those of you guys who are interested to explore this as a career option as well. So definitely go check out strategy um, under the strategy toolkit. 
And of course, um, on the rest of the other spaces, um, I definitely suggest everybody to check out what rankings, especially for those in the creative space, um, looking into creating great campaigns or um, you're hoping to, again, go back to inspiration. Now, while case studies look at um, a global perspective, what rankings look at global perspective, but we select what is the best of the best. So the creme de la creme of the crop. So um, check out Walk Creative 100, where we feature the 100 top creative campaigns um, based on how many awards they've been winning and what kind of impact did they have on society. Um, there's the effective awards that looks into um, the effectiveness of delivering the message. And of course, media um, looking into effective media strategies um, that really covers from traditional to digital to even programmatic media as well. Now, you'll also be able to see quite a number of other things like reports and research. Um, so this, again, um, additional reading for some of you guys who are pursuing um, a more um, intense kind of um, understanding to certain trends. Do check that out as well. Okay, so this basically um, is the main modules inside Walk. Um, it sounds like a lot um, and it sounds a little complicated, but I definitely suggest everybody to use this um, to your advantage and it's really, really easy to use. So now I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks to use this guide, okay, uh, to use this entire database. So step one, um, everyone who probably can see on the top right-hand corner is this thing called Browse by Interest. Now, when you click on Browse by Interest, we actually group the entire work database into um, the different topics and categories or even geographies. So this, in that sense, is like a glossary, right? Um, for This basically means that for some of you people who might be under hoping to understand things like the B2B audiences, how it's going to be looking like, how do I use AI in marketing, for instance? So clicking on each of these links guides you directly directly to a search um, made within that particular topic or even a category or even a geography. So um, for an example, some of our friends here who might be pursuing MBAs or um, a, a higher level um, strategy module, you want to understand, um, a compar do a comparison between the Hong Kong economy versus to Southeast Asia, Singapore, for instance. So definitely check out the um, geography's, perspective, uh, geography's um, glossary and click away on some of the key things that's happening within that region to help craft that perspective for your thesis or um, your own um, tutorials and all that. So pretty useful for using the glossary. Now for all our friends who are um, gaming up for a um, big search itself, my suggestion is to check out the top um, middle bar here, which is like a little search bar. So say for example, today I might be doing environmental engineering and doing a, a major or minor in business. And I want to understand how sustainability can play a part in um, businesses today uh, from business operations and branding. So searching sustainability, if I click search, you get this whole list of articles coming out. Now, the good thing is within Walk is that we aggregate only things related to marketing, branding, um, and obviously the main business administrative side as well. So um, you see all these results, um, you see all these reads, we give you the minutes to read, but then you start to realize, how do I get started? So that's when I suggest you take a look at the top um, of the left column over here under the search filter. So some of these times you might be, you might want to start off things like, say for example, an opinion. Some of you guys might start off things like news. Some of you guys might want to even delve to research itself. Um, how does the statistical model look like for some of these um, sustainable pieces? So that's actually when you can just click away and use those filters to start off with that key topic. Um, a key point to go on. Now, subsequently, some of you guys then might want to delve further. Um, that's when you can use things like case studies or even look at data points to help support some of the main um, hypotheses which you might have. So in short, really, um, the search bar is a great way to be at, but just know how to search by using the filters on the left. Uh, at the same time, you'll be able to see that you have a um, number of filters from things like categories to brands to locations and source. So use this all to your advantage. Okay, so in short, really, um, work as a whole is all about really um, the idea of marketing effectiveness is we bring you everything from marketing insight trends down to data. And more importantly, it's to really help you craft that insight and perspective um, based on whatever we can present to you um, using, of course, um, the work feed as well as our own opinion pieces 
it's always great to hear how the world is progressing with the number of data trends or even marketing trends itself. Now, as we progress into 2022 um, and um, of course the rest of the years, the idea of an ever-changing consumer also requires us today as um, students or even faculty or beyond that, um, people in the private sector, public sector, to always understand how people are progressing with these trends. So I'm definitely de suggesting everybody, um, if you've got the time, check out the work database. We've got quite a number of pieces on um, the consumer behaviors and today's consumer, more importantly, the audiences as it progresses. All right. So um, thank you very much, uh, everybody over at um, HKBU. If you do have questions, it's a great time for you to ask me that. Um, you can always put that in the chat function below. And I'm happy to be here to answer any of them. Thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction of the world of call uh, features and functionality can kind of very um, uh, complicated and uh, but I find that this platform is very informative and uh, for the images and also the statistics is very up to date right uh, it is actually mm -hmm. so the, the the good part about our data points is that you would see things that's on a year to year basis so yeah. this also allows you to see a number of trends now of course for some of you guys who are progressing deep into data um, as you progress maybe into um, um, the, the industry after you graduate um, there are also a number of other data points that's available within walk um, under our data premium space um, which is going to be quite interesting for you guys too so love to see um, how you guys really use the information that's on walk in your um, day to day on your day to day basis and in the future as well hmm. I'm um, just have one question about using Word.com. If uh, if just like presenting, I'm a student. If I find a piece of a report or resources is very useful related to my research topic, can I export or uh, how do I transfer this kind of information into my research paper? Can I export the the information or how do we make citation? Is there any any um any section of, of the Word.com that can uh, generate the citation? Right. Okay. So um, I'm not exactly sure how citations would be like um, for marketing pieces, especially where uh, that's not directly journal based. Um, but my understanding is that um, the APA, the APA citation style may not be the most useful when it comes to links. So I would definitely suggest that you catch up with your marketing professors just to see mm -hmm. how citations are done. Um, but on the point of actually exportation, so um, all these resources that you see here are of course provided to the um, Hong Kong Baptist University. So if you do use any of these resources, Sources, do remember that you do need to um, remember to cite. Uh, so check in with your marketing professors on how to cite and also about lifting. Um, so I think that this is um, the idea of uh, you, know, you might have to manage on plag plagiarism counts, um, which I'm not, if I'm not wrong, copyright does require no more than five to 10%. So yeah. do <laughs> take note of that measure. Um, but I definitely also recommend everyone um, as you're reading through this, um, create your own summaries. Um, truth be told, when I was a student, um, when I was exposed to the uh, database like this, uh, what really struck me was actually the opinion pieces that has been um, built together in. Because more often than not, um, while we create our own perspectives, um, it's always about how reading how other people create their own perspective. How much do you agree with that person's perspective? And if you were to be presenting this to someone, how would you try to phrase it in your own words? So actually that's creating your own point of view and that's fantastic, especially when what gives you a number of opinions. A lot of them are pretty much aligned, um, but there are also different ways of how they approach the conversation. So I hope that uh, in terms of exporting as you link the article back in, just remember to always try to um, use your own point of view. And we definitely yeah. hope that what excites you to create that own point of view as well. This is a kind of critical critical thinking that uh, our students have to be learned uh, because <laughs> yes, don't exactly. just follow or just copy uh, the thoughts or the reels from the oral, but you have to uh, create your critical thinking or your mindset. <laughs> Why do you need to use this piece of information to support your viewpoint? Definitely. And it, inevitably, as we look into um, critical thinking, um, it's very easy for us to um, sway and follow people's opinions or based on our research. But remember, at the end of the day, um, critical thinking is about reading a number of sources, um, really ensuring that your, how does your opinion change with these sources, mm -hmm. fact-finding and creating that one perspective that makes sense to you. It's only when it makes sense to you and it's aligned with a number of evidence that you can say that this hypothesis does hold its own weight. 
and hopefully that would also help you um, in the future as you progress into the working world as well. Mm -hmm. Very, very good advice from Kenneth. Yes, I totally agree with you. <laughs> right. So, and uh, for our audience today, uh, have you tried to use Photocom before you can share your photos or cameras during the trip? Or I'm just wondering, have you used Photocom before our session starting today or previously you already quite uh, use it quite over? <laughs> you can see your town students and uh, faculty members. Have you tried to use these e-resources before or, oh, it's not. Uh, this is the first time I, uh, uh, have a look or heard about Watercom and what kind of features or function. Oh, there are some case studies which is very useful for uh, like um, advertising or marketing student. Even if you are not a business student, but if you have some other general education courses or some other elective courses, I believe that Watercom is a very good piece of uh, resources if you want to find some business information, uh, advertising information, or knowing more about some company's background information. Mm, that's yeah, absolutely right, Angela. I think you got it spot on. Um, so I think I would definitely suggest to our students, um, do not just let walk, um, kind of while we position ourselves as marketing effectiveness, um, do not let walk just appear to you as marketing, branding, B, uh, and business administration. Um, what I would I like to everybody, I like everybody to approach work as a database where you understand how a consumer think. Now, um, curiously enough, the consumer mindset is actually the very first step to understanding the world. Um, how do we try to, how do we react to things like sound? Um, how do we react to things like visuals? And how do all these actually lead to things like a marketing insight? Or more importantly, how messaging actually is translated to our consumer today. So um, definitely recommend people who are really approaching um, an interdisciplinary approach um, to all your studies, definitely use the work database as a space to also work on as well. And to all the students in the marketing and the business school, um, definitely a, a database that you guys should be exploring too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hi, Kenny. Yes, uh, may hi. I ask Wallace. a question? Yes. Uh, I'm I'm browsing the uh, case, uh, case finder in Ooh. work and I find so much information uh, in each of the um, case study, um, yeah. uh, each of the case. So uh, may, I just wonder, uh, for those information, who is who are the writers and how will uh, collect those data and information and right. input to the database? Fantastic question, Wallace. Okay, so um, just to of course a recap on what the case study uh, is, a uh, case study finder is on top right hand corner. You see under case studies, you'll be able to see case finder. So um, to start off first, um, so who writes all this? Now all these. Article, uh, all these articles, all these campaign case studies actually written by the agencies themselves. Agencies, the brands, anyone who's submitting their um, campaign for an award. So um, awards in the uh, working world or in the advertising world are kind of like um, accolades that people will be always collecting, awards that really they want to win, right? So um, to win those awards, it also means that the campaign is scrutinized by a lot of marketing leaders. It's a huge panel out there. So to ensure that they win, they try to they give a lot of information, like things like insights, um, how do they derive the campaign or why the campaign even started off. Um, they also look into the results of the campaign, right? And we you may always hear this word ROI, especially the economic space. So the return of investment. So how does that what does it mean when I put in one dollar in marketing costs and how much revenue I come out from it. Um, at the same time, then we also talk about the execution, how to do it, right? So when you understand then um, that to win a campaign, you need all this information, it becomes um, second nature or easy to understand why the case study is so packed or at least all the information is over there. Now, how do we then bring all these cases together? So that actually looked into Walk's ecosystem because we're so glad to be working with um, people like the Cannes Lion, the MMA Awards, um, and of course, um, you're looking at your 10 gram effectiveness award. Some of you may know of the FEs. Um, so these are just global award companies, I'm sorry, global marketing awards that is found around the world. Um, and some that are more region specific. So this also therefore allowed us to really build this huge case study library um, and keeping it as updated as possible as well. 
So um, in that sense, it's our huge ecosystem. Um, and also very thankful for all our partners who, all, who are very enthusiastic with their submissions as well. So this therefore translates to um, our, us as students or us as users of the database to really glean from all this information that they have provided. So yeah, um, great space to be in actually <laughs> okay. for all these case studies. I hope I answered that question, Wallace. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, as you know, uh, in the um, the this uh, academic world, uh, when like uh, when when you're a student and you uh, you cite cite some uh, journal article, and uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, reference needed to provide it in the uh, our paper. Yeah. So that would be good if we can we can know uh, uh, who is the writer of those case. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I think that it's going to be a little different from um, your usual uh, APA kind of uh, publishing, or at least um, the uh, citations of this published. So um, when I was in uh, when I was in school and I had business modules, um, mm. unless it's a research research article that you would see. Um, so give you an example. Actually, we do have a very heavy research space uh, research space as well. So mm. under analysis, you see research. Um, this is actually coming from the journal of advertising research. Um, this one is interesting, especially for people who are looking into the actual. Um, understanding of things like statistical modeling, um, consumer behavior, um, psychology, etc. So this one, you'll be able to see the actual um, authors of the paper, oh. where it was cited, and um, the main uh, the main article itself. So for the journal articles within Walk, which is the journal of advertising research, you may have to use your normal um, citation methods. Um, beyond that, then, if you're using a Walk article, I think if I'm not wrong, um, from my understanding from some of the business schools, you may not you you may actually skip the mention of the art the all the writers, but you do need to cite back where you found it. So beyond like a hyperlink, you may have to um, do a comma to walk. Um, and then of course, um, comma to the timestamp. So the timestamp generally is actually written on the right hand side, um, where we also give you where, when it was published itself. Yeah, but um, for better understanding of how to use this, you may have to check in with your professors on how they would prefer the citation method to be in, because there isn't a real uh, kind of like format that we need to follow as compared to um, some of the more scientific journals that you will see out there. Okay. Thank you, Kenny. It's clear to me. No problem. And uh, I just found that uh, on the Wall.com, there are some kinds of other wall guides uh, which provide full support on uh, some particular topic. Can I just share my screen? Ah, sure thing. Okay, I'm going to just stop sharing. and you can take over. Okay, thank you, uh, Kenny. So here, this is the guide. I just browsing the Wall.com. <laughs> yeah. I find yeah. that, oh, this page is very useful. Oh, how did I do that? Oh, how can I? Oh, you can go back to the page. Back. Yeah, just go back and you click on the uh, hyperlink of the walk guide to conscious media investment. Uh, just the walk, uh, the, the, the title of the walk guides. I can the click title. on view all guides. Yeah. Okay, maybe yeah. on this page, you can click on view all guides. Mm -hmm. View all guides. Yes. yes. And then you'll be able to see all this. So. Um, yeah. you will, when you click on the main hyperlink of this article, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's a summary deck. So this basically gives you, uh, yeah, so this mm. gives you an idea of what is this. So say, for example, for some of our friends who might want to understand things like um, the whole diversity inclusion um, perspective, or mm. even down to um, conscious media investment onto uh, the idea of how media investment actually affects um, perception on brand. So not just DEI itself. So you will be able to see then an entire commentary piece that's brought to you by Walk. Um, you'll be able to download the PDF. You'll be able to read the entire piece um, and really um, move on with it. But do we do know that some of our students or even faculty members may just want to have a quick summary of what this is about? So if you scroll all the way up, you'll be able to see an entire summary of um, the, uh, the article itself. So that's, yeah, that's correct. That's over here. So you can actually reference from this to just get an idea. Okay, this is what I'm going to be reading. Um, then once, and on the bottom part, we see the download PDF. You can click on the download PDF um, for more information. Now, for each of the different articles as well, you can actually um, opt to PDF it also. 
So that actually is on the top right hand corner. You see a few icons. Um, you can work with that as well. So oh, it's a yeah. very fruitful report. It contains fifty-five the, page. Uh, really yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to also add on, Angela, this is only the summary of the um entire thing because if you realize also as you move down the PDF. There are a number of hyperlinks, um, like you say, for example, societal safety and industrial uh, sustainability and all that. So all these hyperlinks are linking back to the walk article also. Mm. So um, I guess you... what there is a hyperlink for particular yes. in the yes. US, so it can yes. be related to the wall with data, right? Exactly. So you'll be oh. able to see um, further readings uh, within the workspace as well. Um, some of these readings can come from news articles, which we have found also. So this becomes a um, like that big anchor piece that you would see on a one to two month basis. And it will help you quite a bit in understanding a key topic. Mm. Really, yeah, really but useful. Great mention. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for uh for the e-commerce or business realm, as you know, oh, uh, chairs, uh, we need to up to the information every time, right? Absolutely, and the thing is, uh, because Walk is always adding on data, um, adding on information, adding on data. So for some of you guys who are really looking into forward trends, um, like say AI, um, the idea of artificial intelligence, everyone's been talking about the metaverse. The curious thing is, Walk has been talking about the metaverse since six months ago, actually. So we have quite a number of um, articles over there on AR and VR and its application to brand. So um, I would say that actually for a lot of students here, um, you might want to use this database um, on a, a daily or some of you guys on a weekly basis um, just to keep yourself abreast with some of the key things happening around the world, especially in this space. So yeah, and the great thing is HKBU's access to this is actually quite immense. <laughs> <laughs> um, in that sense, also um, leveraging on the different ways of um, using this database is going to be um, beneficial for you as well. Yeah, Angela, maybe on the point on advanced search, um, I definitely suggest you guys to use this if you know how to, you already have a very clear idea of how to use the filters. Um, it can be a little daunting, uh, <laughs> especially when you use things like exact space, all these words. It's very library, um, using your, uh, your library search system, which is fantastic. Um, but of course, because of walks, um, extent, uh, I would, if you know how to use our, uh, if you already got a sense of how to use our filters, um, play around with advanced search um, from exact phrases, all these words and so on. But otherwise, our search bar has mm -hmm. made it as user-friendly as possible. Yes, <laughs> super user-friendly. All these words or any of these words, I can just uh, enter a soft phrase and, oh, can you match my results with any yes. of these words or uh, exclude <laughs> those of these words, right? Yes. <laughs> So um, the fortunate thing, of course, um, is when we create all these filters, um, it kind of takes out things like using the asterisk sign where you use um, search for all phrase. Yeah, so uh, all contains, right? Um, but of course, where we want to help everybody is the user <laughs> experience for walk actually has been quite refined already. Oh, I've actually forgotten to mention a very interesting feature. So for some of our friends here who might be a little more Chi um, Chinese inclined or like to read um, Chinese articles. Now that's actually featured on walk as well. Okay. So on the top right hand corner, you would see the English function. You can click on it and you can switch over to Zhongwen um, in Chinese. Um, if you, and if you look into the main page itself at walk.com, the entire page will be automatically oh, translated to Mandarin. Automatically translated in the Chinese, right? Yes. Not every article, um, but then we do actually encourage a real create and the machine true. learning, correct? So if you look into, if you click on any of these articles, like Xiang Mao Fan into the So you actually we do machine translate quite a lot of this stuff. Oh. Um, in addition to this, um, on a month-to-month -month basis, we do want to constantly share articles with our universities. So um, with HKBU, we do uh, quarter updates as well, like key things to read up for. So when the when they actually share with you these kind of newsletters, do read up on this. Um, this also means that when we share, uh, it could be Chinese China-based articles for some of you guys who might be hoping to understand the mainland China's uh, marketing trends. So all this can also be featured. And those are written by our Shanghai editors. So mm -hmm. um, we've got people um, really in the different parts of the world um, mm -hmm. providing that global perspective as well. So yeah, um, just an interesting way of reading this, especially for some of, you, for, uh, some of our friends who might want to um, use it to, uh, as, uh, so use this to really understand business Mandarin. 
Yes, it's very useful. Yes, is this platform provide multi language multi language search. Yeah. Chinese, we would, even even Korean. We would um, like to tell you that the Korean one is, but the Korean one is in in play, in progress. In, in progress. Good in to progress. Know. Good yes. to know. Yes. Um. Of course, it uh, it will. It, there will be time. Um. There will. There's there's definitely time actually allocated to help. Um. In this. And where we wanted to also help is um, to also provide that uh, bigger global perspective and really putting as much as possible into different languages as well. So, yeah, in time to come, um, who knows? We might have things like Espanol, Italiano, so on and so forth. So, yeah, do always keep a look on, on the workspace. But in the interim, um, for some of our friends who have um, language preferences, you can nav navigate the work database using um, Chinese as well. Mm. Very useful because this platform provides multi language information, even though some of the sessions may be translated by the machine, but it's also easy for our researchers, for our students to get the first hand information from the platform. That is correct. And the thing is, if you do search in Chinese, um, using Chinese characters um, in the pinging format or um, in stroke formats as well, you should be able to find some of these articles also. So um, definitely. So toggle. it's also provide a uh, Chinese character search information. Yes, that's correct. So um, it's pretty useful, especially for our friends who um, need, uh, who want to search for Chinese-based articles. Uh, for example, some of our uh, um, China colleagues, or um, some of um, our China stu our mainland students, they mm -hmm. do actually use um, when they try to search for Xiao Hong Shu, for instance, mm -hmm. beyond the pinging format to search in the English article, they do actually use the um, Chinese uh, Hanyu pinging into Chinese characters also. So it's pretty useful if you want to understand certain trends there too. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank Kenny, you. Kenny, one yes. more question. <laughs> um, I just wonder what is the earliest data or article we can retrieve from the wall? Earliest article. Um, mm. but believe it or not, walk was established in 1985. So um, but 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 mm. in terms of articles that we do um, try to keep abreast, it's all approximately like 2012, um, 2011. You will see some 27 articles as well. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, as we port all uh, everything over to the main database, we also want to ensure that there is um, a lot more recency to our articles as well. So mm -hmm. that's also the reason to why if you search um, on and do any form of searches, you'll be able to do a filter of relevance, newest and oldest um, for mm -hmm. your reference also. And I would say that the marketing industry is one that evolves so rapidly. Um, I think our students or um, here or everybody here could agree that the e-commerce boom did not fly as fast as they did until 2020 and 2021. Um, I think when one of our recent um, studies, it was like 30 to 33 percent of retail is going to be coming from e-commerce. So where does that lie in retail on uh, the retail space? How is it going to be evolving? How do we try to create more experiences for people to come in? Um, with Gen Z, Gen Alpha, um, the new Gen Alpha that a lot of people are slowly talking about as well. How are they evolving and how would they um, translate to people who are like your baby boomers? So that's also the reason why for the recency of articles, you see that it's, uh, we don't put too much back, date, uh, back history. Um, we do try to keep it as recent as possible. But sufficient enough for some of our friends here who are doing juxtapositions and comparisons um, between um, years and trends and how marketing has evolved. Mm. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Thank you for your sharing, Kenny. So uh, it's already nearly 11.20. So for our guests or uh, some of the audience, do you have any questions related to war or come this morning? Feel free to raise up your hands or freely type in your message in the chat box if you have a question on your mind. Could be a shy audience, uh, given yes, that it's the first time. Yes, maybe a bit shy. <laughs> yeah, but no worries at all. Uh, we definitely encourage everybody to use Walk um, as often as you can. And of course, if you've got any questions, um, feel free to reach out to the library. The library knows how to reach out to Walk. And we're more than happy to... Con um, this resource, my understanding, is also available on the um, Hong Kong Baptist University's YouTube channel. So definitely go look out for that. Um, subscribe to it, of course, because there's a lot of articles over there. I mean, I checked the YouTube channel. I realized 
um, how much effort actually it is to really <laughs> devoted to really help our friends understand the resources over there. So um, at the end of the day, uh, where um, we are at work and how we are partnering with HKBU, um, we mm -hmm. want to also ensure that everybody has a good experience. So if you've got any feedback, um, anything that you're unsure about, um, feel free to also forward across. Uh, we're always happy to help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right so, uh if no more question actually thank you very much for your sharing kenneth for no the problem. introduction and also i find that a model gas available on Worldcom is very useful and handy for researchers to get the latest or up-to-date or trendy uh, information really really appreciate for your sharing this morning thank you thank, kenneth. thank you very much for the invitation angela and wallace as well and yeah all the very best for e-resources week and I wish everybody an awesome 2022. Thank you very much for having me.